All right. Welcome back, everyone. Can everyone hear me and see me? Hold on one second. Uh, uh. All right. Now we're good. <laughs> the headphones uh, were acting up. But anyways, we're back again. We're live. Uh, welcome here, everyone. This is the third and the last event for the 4ML series, which has been amazing. It's literally been a way we started uh, this whole series, and it's definitely you know, uh, surpassed all our expectations because it's been really, really amazing. Now, um, today we have another fantastic event in which uh, the winners of the project contest will be presenting their ideas and hopefully everyone will find them interesting and we'll see certain ways in which everything that Jacopo has amazingly presented over the past two events can be applied to uh, specific scenarios and certain applications, you know? Um, but the order for the presentations, as you know, we have four winners, actually, uh, actually we have three winners and an extra one, which is a special shout out because it was really interesting and we thought, hey, uh, this one also deserves to present during this special event. So the order will be from the shout out to the first, so uh, fourth, third, second, and first, and uh, in between these presentations, uh, Jacopo will be doing a little review on the nominees of uh, specific categories that we've created specific for these uh, uh, these teams and these projects because to be honest we were impressed and definitely uh, we're not expecting such great quality projects from so many of you it was uh, unreal Jacopo can mention a few more words about that obviously from the technical point of view but the entire core team also reviewed your projects and um, we were speechless about certain projects because they were really creative uh, and obviously it's amazing to receive so much engagement and interest from, uh, from everybody here. So um, Jacopo, if you want to add anything else to this introduction and then we'll get it started. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. So. Um... First off, it's great again to be here with all of you. I see that uh, we still have like a lot of participants also today who are eager to, to hear from the winning projects. But um, to be honest, I would have let everybody win because all projects, like literally all projects were above the expected uh, quality. So thank you, thank you so much to everybody who participated. Uh, the, the ideas around the projects were just fantastic addressing so many problems around both uh, Polytechnico life and uh, the, the other topic that we chose about COVID and being connected. And some of them were also um, regarding both of the topics. So that, that, that was actually um, amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of all of the work that you guys have done, uh, especially those who have dove even deeper than uh, the series. So thank you so much for submitting your projects. And as Alejandro said, we will have some Q&A sessions uh, in between projects where you guys can ask some questions to, to, the, um, to the projects. Um, and then I will also be nominating some very interesting projects on specific topics. So make sure you bear with us because your project may be um, nominated for uh, one of the categories that we have identified. So thank you, Alejandro. And I guess we can jump into the first project then. Yep, I just stopped sharing and uh, I gave uh, Ravi, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, uh, the permission yep. to you. Okay, great. You are okay. there. Yeah, so all you yours from screen? here. Yep, perfect. Okay, nice. So, hi everyone. My name is Ravi Francesco Srinivasan and I'm a third year student in com com uh, engineering of computing systems. Hi everyone, I'm Robert. I'm also a third year student in computer science engineering at Polimi. Hi, I'm uh, Giovanni and uh, as well I'm uh, on the third year of uh, 
engineering of uh, computer systems at uh, Polymin. Ravi, you can go with the next slide. Okay, so the idea behind our project was the fact that 2020 brought changes to a lot of us in, and to everyone's life, but mostly to our students since we went from going to classes each day to being glued to our chair looking at video lectures. Okay, although this has many pros, it also has many cons, such as headaches, eye soreness, and the lack, the lack of concentration, and obviously the high screen time. As you can see, the picture in the slide is not taken from the internet. It is, it is my own picture. So yeah, you get it. So uh, next slide. Since Corona caused the changes very suddenly, universities and students had no time to adapt whatsoever. And there was no obvious solution uh, on instantly after it happened. And that's what we try to fight. Okay, so uh, our problem was to try to reduce the screen time without missing on content that is explained by professors during lectures. Uh, this is both to help students uh, with uh, dealing with online classes as well as help them concentrating because the high screen time may cause a lack of con concentration in the long time as well as eye soreness, as Robert mentioned. So this tool is also t uh, taught about uh, is also thinking about uh, using time more efficiently. So. Uh, you have less screen time, uh, but also uh, you can have everything uh, uh, that you have by listening to the entire lecture. And also, we think we thought about that uh, one of the main features that we we lost with uh, losing face-to-face -face, uh, uh, lectures is uh, interactivity. So there's no uh, fast way to ask and receive an answer from a professor, uh, apart from the chat. That not, not all professors uh, are are uh, are reading and answering to. So our tool is based on the uh, graph that you can see on the upper right of the screen. Uh, we take a video lecture as an input and we go in this part of the tool that uh, transcribes the video into a text format. And this can be done with uh, various softwares that are widely available. Uh, the next thing is the first uh, part that we use uh, machine learning on and that is paragraph classification. So we have decided to uh, categorize uh, paragraphs uh, in, uh, in a way that we get, we get like a definition paragraph where like a, a professor uh, makes a definition or we have an example paragraph where a professor makes an example or we have an exercise paragraph and so on and so forth. And to do this, uh, we decided to use a, a solution that was based on a paper called linear text segmentation using classification techniques. And this is able to uh, segment a text and unstructured text. So the, the one of, of the kind we get from a video transcription and we would uh, use one of the many uh, solutions that we were proposing in the paper, but particularly a feature-based approach that is based on multiple features, such as, such as phrases, uh, uh, pronouns, uh, full proper nouns. And this feature would be able to uh, detect boundaries between topics. So it will be very nice for us to use this uh, particular solution. Then, after the text is classified in paragraphs, they are also divided in topping using another ML technique, which in this case would be clustering. A 2014 paper studied a specific case and showed that the best way to cluster text on a scientific corpus is uh, done using the sequential information bottleneck algorithm, which clusters data based on the co-occurrences of the data itself, which in this case would be the words, but also the context of which these words find themselves on. After that, we also label the clusters based on the most important keywords. And then we will ask the user for a query and make uh, and filter the transcription based on this query, trying to find a bit more personalized summary. Uh, the filtered uh, transcription is then uh, summarized using an extractive uh, approach, meaning we only select uh, already existing sentences by feedful word neural networks uh, without access to any linguistic information as uh, we as pr proposed, it was proposed uh, in a paper by uh, three students uh, from University of Delhi. Um, furthermore, during uh, the transcription of the video, uh, timestamps uh, are generated uh, for the video lecture, allowing uh, to link sentences and paragraphs to construct a timeline. Uh, so based uh, on the text uh, summary, uh, parts of the video are cut and the corresponding video lecture summary is created uh, very easily. Uh, moving uh, to the second uh, diagram, um, uh, the text uh, lecture summary paired with data uh, generated by paragraph clustering is used to extract uh, topic-related key phrases. Uh, 
uh, the student is then asked to associate the phrase with the correct topic, so the cluster. If the student, uh, if the student provides uh, the wrong answer, a pinpoint to the correct, uh, correct explanation is uh, then presented. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, the spring semester of uh, 2020 has uh, provided plenty of uh, recorded uh, video lectures. Uh, we, all uh, the students from Polymi, uh, can uh, remember uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, so, together with the great number of uh, these videos, um, we also have uh, plenty of videos uh, on platforms uh, like YouTube uh, that um, we can use uh, to train uh, our tool like for uh, clustering and uh, labeling. Um, uh, and uh, furthermore, the video to text uh, transcription is um, uh, acquired uh, through one of the many videos to text uh, transcription tools and services uh, that we can easily find uh, um, already available. Robert? I was muted. Sorry. So uh, the main uh, the main pro pro of our tool is the fact that besides the training, which is obviously a very heavy part, it has pretty low requirement and it's also highly customizable and uh, it can it can help the student easily with the knowledge checking system that Giovanni mentioned. But the thing is that there is no such thing as a perfect summary, which means that uh, it won't ever replace uh, normal lectures. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is our proposal to um, to help with the problems that come with video lectures, which includes uh, by summarizing. Uh, now the uh, written lecture summary, uh, video summary, and also this interactive questions to help the student check if he has properly grasped what the professor was trying to teach. Uh, I think that's everything, and. Thanks everyone for the time. Great. That's that's actually great. Um, thank you guys so much for sharing, but please bear with us because I really would like to invite uh, everybody to uh, submit their questions in the chat so that we can read some of them out for um, the, the, the people who actually developed this fantastic project. So in the meantime, I'll be um, sharing some feedback from my side. So first of all, um, I really like um, the, the problem that you have chosen. It's quite original. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing that um, you transform something that is quite, um, how would you call it, like annoying, probably the fact that we have to follow lectures online into something that uh, could be a very uh, relevant um, projects uh, to, that, that will help actually a lot of people at Polymi. So that, that is actually fantastic. So again, please uh, throw in your questions in the chat. And um, my, my question would, for you, uh, my first question would be, um, have you thought of any kind of way that students can provide feedback to improve the model or professors can also contribute into this? So. What about model improvement? Uh, so one of the way we thought that um, uh, a useful thing that students could do and we could implement in this idea would be to predefine the topics that uh, are um, are proposed in the lecture. So the algorithm will be will be having a much easier time to identify the topics that will be then um, that will be clustered uh, after the paragraph classification as we uh, told in the diagram that we showed. And another way would be, this could be done by students or also by professors that would submit the uh, the program. So every lecture has uh, some topics, things, et cetera. And also uh, one other thing we thought would be that professor would make, will make the, um, uh, the questions instead of uh, machine learning. Machine learning can do some simple, um, generate some simple question as we propose. So uh, based on the topics that we're proposing the lecture, it would extract some phrases and ask the student to associate, to associate these uh, phrases with the topic. But uh, if a professor made like an, uh, an, a question during the, 
during the lecture, uh, it would be nice that uh, the algorithm would be able to do the same question knowing the exact answer. I would also like to add that the project can also be expanded using the previous exams that every student for each class has. If it's possible to transcribe them and try to include them into, uh, into the summarization, uh, when the tool will try to cross, uh, it can be improved in a way that it will try to cross check what the teacher is saying with what is actually found in the exam most of the time. So you know if it's actually useful or maybe you, you just don't need to study it for the, for the actual exam day. I like that uh, idea, uh, even though you kind of want always to study everything, uh, right? Anyway, um, while we wait for other questions, I will also tell you that I really liked the fact that um, you introduced some sort of personalization uh, with the summary, right? So that students can actually uh, perform some uh, personalized queries. That is actually very interesting. Also, it is uh, obvious to note that you used uh, scientific papers for this and uh, really uh, well done on that because of course we're just students right and um, we're, we're not going to easily be producing the next uh, great uh, thing it requires a lot of uh, studying and research and work right you only had a couple of days and you did something amazing so it is fantastic that you base your work off of uh, scientific papers and you've done a lot of research i really appreciated that and finally also the possibility of um, letting students doing exercises that was fantastic so uh, we have um, a question from uh, Mikhailo uh, who is asking um, how do you define that student answer on specific question is correct so I guess he's asking how you verify the correctness of an answer well as I explained earlier the the topics are clustered and they're labeled. The labels are basically the most uh, mo the most similar keywords out of them all. So, like uh, when we pro when we made this project, I was making the example of electronics and an operational amplifier. So, like a professor in a lesson can talk about an introduction to uh, amplifiers, then certain types of amplifiers, and the problems that come with it. So, what we will do is find this a phrase that is very similar to. Uh, other phrase in that cluster, but that doesn't contain the keyword in itself. So like in this case, the keyword could be problems. So we try to find a sentence that doesn't have that doesn't directly have the word problem in it. And then the options on the on the question are other clusters. So like it will be a phrase regarding problems. And then uh, the question will be, OK, so what is this phrase about? Is it about the introduction? Is it about the types? Is it about the problems? And it will use this cluster to find out if it's the correct answer or not. We tried to make it to find a way to make intelligent questions, but we found out that it's a um, part of artificial intelligence that is still being developed. Uh, it's called proactive questions and also Microsoft and Google are still working on it. So we didn't want to <laughs> include things that don't exist yet. And I guess we can uh, wrap it up for this first uh, project so that we can move on. So thank you guys a lot and please follow up any questions uh, in the chat. Uh, fantastic, fantastic work again. Uh, great, great, great. All right. So I guess now it's time for the first nominations, right, Ali? That is right. Um, we have a uh, first category there. You. Right. Uh, you can go ready. ahead and share your screen if uh, yep. if it's ready, because it our students so, are about to find out. Be ready for the first. <laughs> uh, yeah, be ready for the first category. Then, all right, for the category of food and queuing, the winner is Fast Queue. It is a mobile app for counting um, queuing people at Politecnico di Milano. So, um, congratulations to Arslan, Livia and Ilaria for this uh, actually fantastic project around the food and queuing at Politecnico di Milano. This um, actually the problem relevance also here is very important and a lot of people actually submitted projects regarding queuing. But I believe um, this project had something more, especially uh, around the user experience, right? So it integrated machine learning and the user experience, which actually was very great and it addressed a very specific problem 
Uh, moreover, uh, this project also used object detection through convolutional neural networks, and uh, it was very, very well explained, to be honest. In only two pages, you guys did something uh, really great. Uh, you mentioned YOLO, that is, you only look once, and also uh, the Detectron um, architecture from Facebook. So thank you a lot for this project. The next one is around diversity. So congratulations, Tim Builder, for having developed this fantastic um, project. So Roberto, Luca, and Alessandro, your solutions were all well specified. I really liked the correctness around uh, your project and your appendix just had the right amount of details which allowed one to deepen into the project. So, and we, we all know diversity is very important now, especially nowadays when the attention over it is growing, growing um, day by day. And it is very important to guarantee that a team has diversity as um, really uh, when you combine uh, different perspectives, then that's when you will get value, right? That's when you evolve. That's when you go uh, towards innovation, right? So th thanks a lot for also choosing this topic. Uh, it was very uh, relevant. So yeah, I guess these are were the first two nominations. Again, congratulations, and we can move on to the next group that it's going to be the third um, ranked in yep. this fantastic contest. They are set up. I just wanted to mention that, yeah, uh, congratulations to those two teams because um, maybe they weren't winners of the contest itself, but overall, the fact that we're, they were still included during this event just speaks very highly of the, of the work they submitted. So congratulations again. And uh, yeah, the next team is ready whenever uh, they want. So the screen is yours. All right. In the meantime, uh, Stefano and Thomas, let me ask you, uh, how was it uh, to work um, in this project? Did, did you guys already know each other or were you like some sort of uh, just well, mutual? I, I knew Stefano from the, the high school. Uh, we, li we lived in the same region, in Friuli Venezia Giulia. And um, I know Alex because uh, he's uh, uh, in Cremona studying computer science uh, with me, and so I connected the, the group. Well, uh, good to know. Good to know that uh, this allows you also to um, work together as a team. That is fantastic. And uh, let, let me ask you in the meantime, what was the biggest challenge when developing this project? I think the idea, yeah. the, the, the idea, the first idea when uh, you have to to decide uh, what to do. And for me, it was mainly the technical side, because well, Thomas was the one uh, who proposed the idea, uh, which both Alex and me found pretty interesting. And then, uh, yeah, so on the technical side, I'm not that. Uh, I, I don't have that much knowledge. The only knowledge I have was from the two events of the DLC. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the toughest part for me. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I, I was just saying it was pretty fun to work on that. And I'm glad I got to know Alex. Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, we actually see how. This, this allows us to enlarge our network and that, that is actually fantastic if you think that in the future also you might end up uh, working on similar things and uh, still um, contacting each other just to say, hey, so uh, how, how do you think I should solve this problem or do you think this solution might be interesting, right? As you, as Thomas said before, probably also, a very big challenge when it comes to projects is around the ideation, right? So that if, when you identify the problem, when you identify the goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually why uh, we set up the uh, project, project by um, having you do both a, a project report and some slides, right? We wanted to give you 
the whole uh, complete experience sort of of uh, a, a fast project, right? So when, when you're building a fast project, that is what you want to do. You want to brainstorm ideas, you want to uh, set the uh, scenario on a broad, um, on a broad, you actually want to find a broad scenario, right? Uh, so what, uh, what then you want to do is to identify a specific problem, right? Because we cannot solve all the problems uh, that um, uh, we have right in the world. So that's why you want to spe specify on one specific problem. All right. So, well, we pretty much present ourselves uh, as for Thomas and me. Uh, so if Alex wants to introduce himself, then I'll start with the presentation. I'm uh, Alex, and uh, I am a bachelor student. I'm at the third year, the last year of the bachelor degree, and I'm studying in Cremona. All right. So, yeah. Um, well, our idea revolves around um, the problem of not knowing um, how many students, how many newly reg registered students will withdraw within November, which is the deadline for them to uh, with, withdraw from their studies and still get a refund on the payment they did to the Politecnico. Um, the, well, not knowing that leads to a delay uh, in the decisions um, about the allocation of Politecnico's financial resources um, since we don't know how many students will uh, drop out, we don't know how much money we can use and how much we actually need to set apart to refund the students. So we thought that machine learning to analyze the data from previous years could be useful to um, solve this issue. Um, so if you could go ahead, uh, Alex. Thank you. Um, so as we are not aware of any existing solutions, uh, we could, oh, wait just a second. Uh, Alex, could you go back? <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, as we are not aware of any existing solutions as of now, we just, that the uh, committee, committee that um, is supposed to make those decisions just does not take action until November on that money. And we just um, operated on that idea. Now, um, I leave the floor to Alex for the technical side. Uh, yeah, we the problem statement is to improve the budget uh, management and uh, we wanted to estimate uh, how many um are like to withdraw uh, with their study so our goal is to predict if a particular student will withdraw before november based on uh, some feature that uh, some feature so we choose uh, the classification algorithm because uh, um, our goal is to divide um, the student in two classes withdraw or not withdraw so um, we uh, analyzed the problem and uh, um, uh, found that this feature that you can see on the screen um, are maybe uh, related to the, the possibility to withdraw. For example, the toll score is uh, an important feature because if uh, someone uh, got uh, a low score, uh, maybe we um, will have a difficult time with the uh, the classes and decide to withdraw. Or, for example, if uh, um, a student is an off-campus student, we'll we like to return home and um, uh, maybe uh, we'll withdraw because uh, the the distance from home is too much. And uh, so. Uh, this is the, the feature that we we found. There are uh, uh, so much, we are a lot, so maybe um, 
an important um, task to do is uh, fi uh, find uh, which one of these are correlated and bring the same information to do a feature reduction to avoid overfitting. Okay, so uh, as you may have noticed, uh, all the features that we use uh, are in the online services of uh, Politecnico. So every every data, uh, Politecnico has already every data, but um, we are not expecting that uh, all the data we need are uh, in the same uh, table in the database. So the all the data will have to be reorganized with some uh, SQL queries. You can go on, Alex. So uh, to do a project uh, recap, in the initial uh, situation, we have uh, a problem. That is that we don't know how many students will withdraw, and that. Uh, um, that make uh, the, pol the committee uh, don't know what to do with the money of the fees uh, of the students. So we try to, to search a solution and the solution uh, that we found is to, to classificate the, the students with the machine learning. And the final situation is that uh, with, uh, we, we can have a, a little uh, percentage of, uh, of uncertainty, but uh, we can uh, estimate uh, on, on big numbers, we can estimate uh, precisely how many people uh, are likely to withdraw, and so the problem is uh, erased. All right, so I guess that was the end of the presentation, right? Yes, all right, fantastic. Well then, thanks a lot also to uh, these guys who shared a fantastic project. I'm gonna um, say what I liked a lot about this project. And in the meantime, please uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Uh, to, to, you did an amazing job, to be honest, because your problem was very specific. Like, you, you addressed something that is not uh, to be given for granted, which is definitely uh, an economic uh, concern when it comes to um, scheduling, you know, to managing actually money, right, inside Polytechnico. And uh, of course, we all know that when it comes to money, the problem becomes quite interesting also, right? But I really loved the simplicity. Right, the simplicity of your problem and the specific given by the specificity of your of your problem. Right, so I hope I explained myself well here. And um, also, I really liked the data engineering phase um, in which you say, "Well, we are considering all of these variables, which we believe are going to be relevant." Right, the, the features for the uh, classification task, but you're saying I'm not 100% sure that all these features are meaningful for the problem and I need to understand which of them are actually correlated with uh, the output variable that is uh, the uh, dropping out or not, right? And you can do that by using uh, various statistical um, methods and evaluating the p-value for instance, right? So there are ways to understand if features are relevant or not. So really great job uh, around that. And that's actually how data science works, right? Data science starts from data and then it guides economic decisions based on the outcomes of the analysis, right? So yeah, this was fantastic. And let's see if there are some questions from your peers. It seems like there are not. And I've already asked you a bunch of questions before. So I think that for the sake of time, we can move on to um, the next uh, group. So we were left with diversity, if I don't go wrong, yes. So the next uh, category is around social and integration, right? So congratulations to Polymates 
So Ricardo, Federico, Martina, and Lupo, your project was actually really nice also. And it was around, let's say, social and integration during this specific time uh, the world uh, is in. Uh, what they do in their project, they pretty much uh, create matches of people uh, based on their technical interest, right? So before we had a, a project that valued diversity, this project values the technical interest, right? So sharing one, um, one interest, right? And uh, building actually a connected network of professionals is what um, is truly important. And I think that this project really addresses um, the, the problem from another perspective also, right? So uh, building matches is not, um, it's not easy at all. And of course, sharing uh, some backgrounds is, is quite important. And how do they do this? They employ clustering, right? Which is uh, one of the machine learning techniques that we have seen. So next, the next nomination is in regard to psychology, right? So we see how machine learning also deals with psychological um, aspects of our lives. And in particular, we're nominating the project, um, which uh, better understanding your peers. Um, this is actually a fantastic project. I really liked it. So um, thank you, Carmen and Fabio for your project. It was amazing. And what, what, they, what they are trying to do in their project is to overcome cultural and language, body language barriers when you, you're um, in video conference, right? And so not only they um, use uh, some uh, facial expression recognition to do that, right? So um, a webcam being able to understand if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're amazed, right? But also they integrate some sort of personalization over that, right? And so perhaps my sad face can be different from your sad face. And so they, they kind of consider this also in the problem, which really makes the project stand out, right? So of course there are some privacy issues related with that, but they also took those into consideration, which added a lot of value to the project. So thanks again. Uh, Carmen and Fabio, and good job for your project. All right, I guess we can jump into the next winner. Yes, uh, the second qualified, and I believe they are set up properly this time, hopefully. So, Mauro, whenever you want, uh, you can share your screen, and uh, Margarita and Chiara, you, got, uh, you can speak as well. Okay, can you hear me? Let me... Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Uh, uh, so I share the screen. And today we are here with me. We have Margarita and uh, Chiara. We are Ghost ID and mm -hmm. presentations starting from Margarita. So let me try yes. uh, this one, I think. Uh, let me move to this. Okay. If we see everything, the presentation. Uh, yeah. uh, tell me something. Now, one thing, yeah, we can see everything. Uh, yeah. Your teammates are sharing their screen, which is awesome. Uh, we asked whoever could do that, had stable connection to do it. So if you can do it, if you have a good connection, if not, it's no problem. Um, just letting you know. I'll try that. Sure, I'll try that. Wait a second. Uh, okay. I think this one. Okay. Can you see me also? Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we are back to the presentation. Go, Margaret. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. I am Margarita. And now uh, we will start to present our project called uh, Roll Call and Proctoring During Exams. Uh, during uh, online exams, we could have different problems like uh, interruptions. Uh, or uh, uh, time losses uh, due to checks and infinite uh, roll calls. For example, uh, uh, we, we know that uh, some uh, professors could ask uh, students to use uh, more than one device uh, during the exam in order to control the room and to be sure that students are not uh, reading from other papers or maybe 
they are talking with someone else in, uh, in the room. So these problems uh, uh, affect uh, both students and professors. Students don't want to lose time and especially they don't want to lose their concentration during the exams. And professors have to constantly check all their students, uh, which could be up to uh, 300. So uh, we want to solve uh, these problems with uh, almost one single machine learning uh, software. About uh, that, we have to say that uh, uh, proctoring software packages based on machine learning already exist in the market. And our idea is to implement these uh, kind of services on each student. So uh, we want to give to Politecnico di Milano a new tool for its students and professors in order to have uh, more efficient identity proctoring during the exams without uh, loss of time, without uh, roll calls, and without uh, interruptions. So uh, next slide, please, Mauro. Okay, so uh, as I said, we want to uh, don't have loss of time, uh, roll calls and interruptions. And uh, now my colleague uh, Chiara will explain more in detail uh, what is uh, our solution. Grazie Margherita. Uh, hi, I'm Chiara and I'm a student of materials engineering and nanotechnology as my colleagues. But let's go down to business. So to implement a proctoring software tailored on each single student, Two machine learning software packages will be used in this project. The first one to tell if the student is having a correct or incorrect behavior, while the second to tailor the correct behavior on each single student and recognize their faces. Um, to train the uh, ML software one, videos of students having a correct behavior need to be submitted. Once the uh, software is trained and tested, it will be able to recognize the average correct behavior, which is the one that all students share. Uh, here, the classification approach is the more suitable, and um, this actually will be used ex extensively throughout the whole process. To train the ML software 2 uh, on the specific correct behavior, which is specific of each individual, uh, the software 1 is run during the lesson, while the second collects data uh, storing them in different databases, which is one for uh, each single student uh, account. This way, software 2 will learn the specific correct behavior of every student using the, the classification machine learning once again. Obviously, uh, software 2 will be much stricter than the former and will be different from student A to student B and so on. If testing is hopefully successful, the software packages can be used during the exam to identify, identify and proctor the students. The first software is run to proctor uh, those students which the other could not recognize for lacking of data. Uh, moreover, more data of the correct behavior, uh, both specific and required during the exam itself. Both programs uh, will notify the uh, professor whether an incorrect behavior is detected. The other feature uh, mentioned uh, provided by the, the two software um, is the facial recognition. Actually, it's provided by, the, uh, by software too. It will be able to quickly check whether the student in front of the camera matches the profile corresponding to its account. The other feature provided by software too is the facial recognition um, so, uh, we need the, uh, the data of the student's faces, which are collected during the... Um, this leads to a rich and various database of uh, sample images that can be, once again, used for the class classification ML. In case of any mismatch <coughs> or impossible identification, the professor will be notified. Note that uh, these software packages will not completely substitute the work or nor they were intended to do it, but they are uh, imagined as an aid. So now let me introduce you, Mauro, who will wrap up everything uh, and conclude this presentation. Hey, thank you, Chiara. Uh, so as we just uh, described is the main idea, the basic idea for our implementation. So we already stated that we have uh, two main data sources 
the program one will feed the, uh, the uh, that will be provided willfully by the students and the program two instead uh, is uh, learning onto the live lessons selected uh, appropriately selected by the uh, program one so uh, moving on to the pros and cons uh, thing that we have to say is that uh, our uh, program is tailored onto each student it is the fundamental aspect for our implementation this uh, is uh, why we expect uh, a good reliability and efficiency for our program also, we can imagine, we can forecast that it is a low budget uh, implementation since we don't require any kind of specific uh, infrastructure or instrumentations, apart, of course, uh, the uh, uh, memory storage uh, servers, which are, of course, uh, basic, at the basis of uh, any kind of uh, machine learning technologies. The main drawback is the, uh, the privacy, the privacy issue, since we uh, we are requiring the live lessons, uh, so uh, uh, the access, complete access to live lessons. So this is the main problem. Also, we in, uh, added the community uh, collaboration, but actually, in our opinion, this is not a, a pro or a con, so it can be seen as both of them. So uh, moving on to the conclusion and summarizing what we said up to now, uh, we can state that our software is a package uh, which is uh, meant to improve proctoring and authentication procedures during exams. Uh, it is tailored on uh, every student, so uh, again we stress out the importance of uh, efficiency and reliability. Uh, it is meant as a professor aid, so it is uh, something, uh, it is, uh, it's not a standalone system, it is uh, meant to, still we require um, a human presence. Uh, which controls it. And finally, uh, we can say that it is uh, open to uh, new possibilities. For example, with the same strategy, we can provide uh, uh, similar, uh, some, uh, we can extend this uh, algorithm to other fields. For example, uh, in this period of lockdown, for example, people which are uh, sit for a long period of time may, uh, may benefit from a machine learning device uh, machine which uh, controls the, the good posture of the person of the people so uh, that was uh, pretty much everything uh, that's all folks so thank you for your kind attention and i'll close the presentation okay um, jacopo before you mention anything about the uh, technical details of the uh, project i just wanted to mention that uh, I love this project because I bet that lots of students took a bunch of uh, online exams last semester, even midterms. This professors suffered it, students suffered it. Uh, you would lose your focus, your concentration before the exam because all the proctoring that had to be done. Um, you mentioned that this doesn't replace a real proctor, but sort of alleviates many of the issues that it could face um, during a real exam. So I think it's uh, an amazing idea. Uh, if you can like actually put it together and sell it out, uh, you'll be making millions out of this because it seems like online mode for many uh, colleges, for even for work, obviously, is here to stay. So, uh, and as you said, it can be upgraded to many different scenarios. So who knows? Um, just wanted to share that because, and not only speaking for myself, but the rest of the core team, we all agreed that this was very innovative and very useful. So congratulations, really amazing work. Thank you very much. Maybe you. we will talk about this matter Thank later you, Thank after you. your advanced course. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. All right, um, on my side, I totally agree with what you said, Alejandro, and um, the problem of pro proctoring actually is quite relevant not only to the universities but also for a lot of other uh, you know public competitions exams and a lot of other things actually uh, so it is very important to try to integrate machine learning and all of the technologies we can think of to solve this problem and as you pointed out i really liked that this application was a sort of support right it was not some substitution so seeing AI as a support is something that we really like ethically, right? So uh, what one could imagine is that when the person is recognized as not having a correct behavior, then 
what you could do is simply tell the professor or the prompter, hey, uh, go and check out on the student, right? Because you don't want, of course, to exclude the student just because you're machine learning application set. So um, also I thought it was great because it um, kind of incentivates students to pay attention during lectures, right? Um, so, so you could also include that um, as, a, as a consideration. And uh, um, the personalization also was great. So that's actually the added value to what already exists. So that, that's actually great. And um, well, the use of facial recognition as a machine learning uh, technique is good. Um, you consider privacy, which is totally important, of course. Um, and also, I really like the fact that uh, you talked about expandability, right? So that you could use the same architecture, the same um, sort of basic uh, solution for, 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 for doing also other tasks, such as post posture um, recognition. And that, that's actually amazing, yeah. Uh, so thanks a lot. and. See that there are not very many questions. Maybe, uh, yeah, uh, Tomas is asking what you're studying at Polini. So if you can repeat that, please. So it's materials engineering and nanotechnology in uh, the um, master science degree, actually. All of you, okay, fantastic. And uh, I have a question personally. So of course, all of uh, the students are probably wondering how they could be folding the machine, right? So how can I still try to um, get my notes out and fool the machine? Have you thought about this aspect of ways that you could be fooling the, the algorithm? Uh, In other uh, words, would it be more complicated to fool the algorithm and the machine or the real person? <laughs> because like that, that's probably... one thing. Um, they can both be fooled, but in different ways. For instance, um, the first machine learning software won't be able to recognize if I am cheating or based on the fact that I'm writing with the left or the right hand. While the second could, because it's tailored. But at the same time, if I am like uh, having a posture that slightly um, is slightly to a correct posture. It actually maybe can't see my eyes because of poor video uh, quality or something. Maybe it can't actually detect if I am having an incorrect behavior. So I think that a human uh, can be more precise because um, it's basically more intelligent at this stage. <laughs> But on the other hand, uh, a human person can't be constantly uh, taking in check 300 persons, people. So, yeah, fantastic. All right, then we have um, a question. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, uh, Mika, Mikailo is asking, Will you analyze the audio from the microphone of the student during an exam? If so, will you determine an anomal, uh, anomal behavior if the student, for example, just uh, like to talk while thinking during the resolution of the exam, right? So, so he's saying, what if uh, you have some outliers, right, for instance, or some, let's say, false positives? Uh, uh, what if I like to talk during the exam and you're also analyzing the microphone? Have you thought about the sound analysis? Um, sound analysis can be oh. quite tricky because we don't know yeah. if our microphone will be actually on or off. Yeah, also we, we thought uh, this is one of the, the reasons for which we said that the system is not standalone. So we have a professor which is uh, provided a notification that the student is behaving in a strange way. So that guy, in that case, it can uh, understand if the, the student is actually cheating or actually not. So this is another thing uh, which, but that's, that's a good question actually, so. So um, it's good that we have a lot of questions, right? Um, it's fantastic, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, it could be helping the professor to draw attention to something that it could be suspicious without, and, and which, without the help or the assistance of this software and this machine learning solution, maybe the professor could have not caught 
at the time? Is that sort of like? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's. It's like this. That's actually really good help. Um, maybe uh, also an implementation could be the fact that. Uh, uh, the professor will not receive every single notification from every movement of the student, but maybe with some bias, if a student is having a percentage of time or movement out of right. uh, what is um, defined as the correct behavior, it will be notified. Yeah. Like, like, oh. <laughs> so let me just gather a couple more questions. So Butterbean is saying, uh, would, but would you like to send uh, some information that will be used against you during the exam, right? So well, this actually raises like an interesting point because mm -hmm. one could say, well, so students could be uh, providing uh, training data that is inaccurate, right? So for instance, like I could be showing correct behavior by cheating. So we would need some sort of um, uh, verification, right? Um, no, uh, this is kind of impossible okay. because um, the correct behavior is selected for the second uh, machine from, by the first, which is fed only with correct behavior um, kind of videos. And of course, um, there will be willful students that never cheat and send us their videos studying in Correct behavior. Yes, so uh, <laughs> what, what you raised is actually important, right? That when you deal with data, you must be sure that your labels are rightly set, right? So, so you yeah. cannot have data where uh, you are behaving correctly, but you labeled it as incorrect or the other way around, which would be not good at all, right? Fantastic. So we have a last... That's... Oh, sorry. No, that, that's the reason why we will use, we would like to use two machine learning software and not one, because we need to first select the data. Okay, 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 fantastic. Yeah, the, the, second, uh, the second one will use only the correct behavior of each student. Okay, yes, 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 now it's even clearer, fantastic. So, again, we have also another uh, question here, so... Um, Giacomo is asking if this is taught to be in real time or the video will be recorded and analyzed later. And so I will um, broaden the question to also the computational requirements from an actual like resource point of view that uh, your project can uh, raise. So, um, we said that one of the pros of our uh, project is that it's cheap since it doesn't need um, like on-site um, investigations or any particular CC cameras or anything. But of course, we will need servers that are like, I guess, I don't know, but I guess huge because we are storing videos of, like in Polytechnic, we are. 40,000 students. So I, I guess we will need a lot of computational help from the uh, database point of view. Uh, I absolutely have no clue. I hope, hope maybe my, my colleagues have um, about the computational power needed for the actual examination of the data. <laughs> it's totally fine if you have no idea because we're in the first stage of what could be a fantastic project. So, Mauro, if you want to go ahead and say something, please do. I don't know. No? Okay. I would, I, I would okay, simply please. say that the same more or less. I think uh, I have not. <laughs> to say about that's, this, that's totally so. fine because Wait. that is why you need a multidisciplinary team right you need a computer scientist you need uh, somebody from electrical you need somebody from management somebody from that is not an engineer themselves right because that, that, that and that's how you create value right and that that's crucial when uh, you're building a project if you only um, stay in your own comfort zone and you do not think of um, something else such as this problem of computational uh, requirements then your projects could be a failure because you're saying okay it's fantastic however I need to pay a lot of money 
to make this real time, right? And actually, of course, it requires a lot of uh, computational power, which could be performed on uh, Polytechnical supercomputers or on the cloud somehow, but of course, it would involve some sort of cost, right? So this is to be taken into consideration as a con of the of the project, but um, also as technology moves on, it becomes cheaper and cheaper. So it's a good start, I would say. <clears throat> All right, I guess we can move to the next uh, project, or actually to the next nomination. So okay. thank you guys a lot for your uh, project. You thank got you. second place. That's fantastic. Thank you. So thank you a lot thank for you. participating. Really great job. Congratulations, guys. Amazing stuff. And thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so Jacobo, we'll be, you share yeah. your stuff, and I set up the next ones. Fantastic. So let's move on to the other nominations. So we were left with psychology. Again, great project. I also saw in the chat that we had some comments around it. Really great, great, great project around psychology. Next up, young developers. So we really wanted to nominate a project that was developed by young students. And this was the case for of Poly Advisor, done by Andrea, Vice, and Mohad. So th this project uh, was about um, the problem of young students uh, who are seeking for advice uh, in their next future, right, regarding their career. And we've got a lot of projects around that, actually, uh, around like which exams to, to, to choose, which path to choose. And this one really caught our attention because even though technically it was not perfect, it really did show a lot of effort. And when we found out that it was from uh, first year students, then we really wanted to uh, nominate them and show what uh, engineers of only a few months actually, right? right? Because he started like a couple months ago, uh, were able uh, to do. So that, that's actually fantastic. And uh, this advice that they gave is based off of interests, capabilities, and personalities. So again, a lot of personalization that is fantastic. And they also dove deep into studying, which um, which would be the best way to select the features, right? In this case, they dove deeper into personality and introduced, well, introduced, they cited an index that can be used to uh, evaluate personality. So re really great work on that. There's a lot of space for improvement, but you really did a great job. So body advisor, good job on your project. Next up is environment and climate. So we, we all know that climate change, environmental um, challenges are really uh, fundamental for uh, our, our time here on Earth, right? And we need to find ways to stop climate change somehow, because otherwise uh, we're going to end up in some deep problems, right? Um, so again, congratulations to Temp Control AI, in particular to Federico and Pietro, who addressed the problem of heating and cooling of rooms in Politecnico di Milano, which we all know does not work that well. Uh, nowadays, it's either really hot or really cold. And as they said, there are a lot of inefficiencies. And so by simply predicting the number of students that would be in a certain room or, and also counting them, uh, thanks to the new uh, cameras that were installed for the lectures, then they could use machine learning to uh, solve all of these inefficiencies and um, make heating and cooling um, even better at poly well, even better, better at Polytechnico. So thanks a lot for addressing this specific problem. Uh, you did a really good job. There's a lot of space for improvement, but uh, really, uh, we really like the fact that you um, concentrated on environment and climate. So, yeah, we still have one nomination left. So please bear with us until the end. But first, we need to dive into the winners of this fantastic con contest, right? So we have with us Ludovico and Matteo. Um, yeah, and Paolo is also said and host. Uh, he 
uh, if Ludovico and Matteo can speak just to see there are no issues. Yes, for me it's okay. Okay. And for me it's okay too. Yes. Okay. Hello, Hello everyone. Let's see uh, if Paolo can get, um, he will need to accept the, the setting as host. And, and Emilio Palma also seems to uh, be waiting. Can you guys um, speak with them and see if they have any issues? I'm not. Uh, Emilio seeing... is saying in the chat that he can speak, and Paolo ah, said he... the same thing right now. Just a just a second. Maybe they are getting set up. We'll wait. <laughs> These are the winners of uh, the project contest. So uh, I bet that everyone would love to see your idea and uh, the, the entire presentation, which is actually fantastic. No, no spoiler alert, just uh, letting everyone know. Maybe check so. for your permissions, Emilio and Paolo. That could be the problem as it was for Alex before. Mm -hmm. Um, both on your uh, navigator, uh, your browser, if it's Google Chrome or Mozilla, check out your um, your settings there, your permissions, as Jacopo said. But if you have any issues, just let us know, and uh, we'll try to uh, we'll try to fix it as last time. It's, this time, obviously, we're having a few more um, technical issues because we are switching hosts all the time, uh, back and forth with screens, and we rely on everyone's connection. But um, it's just great and fantastic that uh, we can coordinate such a big event online, and everyone uh, was able to work on these projects. At the same time, now we can present them. So uh, bear with us for a little bit because I'm sure uh, we'll get it to work in in just a moment. Um, okay. uh, Paolo and uh, Emilio, if you can refresh and maybe uh, log back in. Sometimes it happens that it lags because we've switched from. Uh, actually, I will um, disable you as uh, um, host and speakers again, and we we will retry. All right, guys, can you hear me? Okay, uh, I can speak. Okay, it seems like the refresh and did the trick. Yes. So amazing. Uh, thank you guys for being here, for taking the time uh, to actually present this stuff to all of us. Uh, Jacopo will give you some insights after the project, uh, after the project presentation, but we were thoroughly impressed by everything. Uh, so we can't wait for you to, to present all this stuff. And I bet that all the other students would love to see who's beaten them on this uh, amazing contest. So uh, all yours from now on. Okay, perfect. So, okay, so fine. Um, my name is Matteo Pavia, and I will be guiding you throughout all of this project with the help of my mates, Ludovico, Emilio, and Paolo. If you want to say hi, guys. Hi, hi everyone. Hi guys. Hi guys. Okay. Hi, Emilio. Can, you, can you see the screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. And if everybody can hear me, fine. Yeah. Or... We see the, the wrong screen because you're in presenter mode. Maybe you want to switch that, but that's up to you. Paolo? Just wait a second. In the meantime, we can say that we are all at the second year of automation engineering and um, information engineering. And so, uh, how's that going? Is it tough so far? <laughs> good, good. Well, <laughs> good. yeah. It's so, challenging. Basically, you can't see the slides. We can't see the slides, but uh, we also see uh, sort of the notes that you might have 
you know, included during the presentation just to help you through, uh, through the content. If you're fine showing them, we have no issue. We know that this was uh, just three days preparation for the, for the project and uh, maybe like one night of rehearsing this presentation. But uh, up to you. Uh, we can, we can um, see both the slides and the notes. And notes. And two screens or one screen? Uh, okay. I think uh, I think it's fine. For me, it's fine. Uh, well, um, Paolo, like Mari is uh, saying in the chat that they can't see the, um, the slides as well. So maybe it's a little smaller. Yeah. Can't you just like? Uh, I don't know how to fix that. Can Can't you just do? You, don't you have a PDF of that? Mm, are you? Uh, yes, we, we have it. Using, we have it. Okay. Or if you're using like a second screen, then you can disconnect the second screen. Paolo, look at the chat. Look at the chat, Paolo. They are yeah. giving some advices. You're getting okay. some Italian help on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And now, same problem. Um, okay. No, now it's all good. Okay. Now it's perfect. Okay. So, all right. All right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No problem. No problem at all. This is not easy to present and to put all this stuff together. So, you guys have. Okay, friends. So here we are, and uh, Paolo, you can move on. With, uh, yes. Second slide. Okay, fun. So um, let's move on with the um, with the problem. So at first, it wasn't easy to um, focus on a specific problem, but we tried to um, to stay with the um, with the problems that every student has been facing since since uh, um, last March, since last uh, February. So um, all the experiences that everybody of us has um, had to be um, had to um, to face during this pandemic situation, and um, we wanted to focus um, specifically on the post lessons experience, because um, we um, we thought that it was very important that um, every student could um, could have a more enjoyable and easier way to um, to watch the recordings of the lessons. And um, <clears throat> um, the main question that came up to our minds was that um, everybody of us had to manually regulate and adjust the video playback speed. And so while um, watching the recordings of the lessons, well, you have to stop it and um, like 100 times. And so um, we tried to focus on this specific problem and uh, you know to, to implement a solution with uh, machine learning. So now for the specific issues, for the technical issues, I will give the word to Ludovico. And uh, in the meanwhile, if you want to uh, write down on the chat how many of you had to face this problem, you know, with the post lesson experience, you can write it down if we have permission. You can go on Ludovico. Yes, Paolo, can you go? Yes, okay. So um, here we, we are going to discuss whether there are or not solutions to the problem. Um, uh, I think that every one of us has used uh, on platforms or um, that are the ones that Politecnico di Milano used to provide the online lessons. And we all know that um, the recordings um the, the, this these platforms don't offer a system to regulate continuously the the speed of, of the video of the recordings so basically we can say confidently that there are no existing solutions to to the problem right now at least at the level that we are offering with our project this leads to some questions and the first one is is it com um, convenient to implement in terms of money and time spent so when you uh, when you are thinking of a pro of a project, you always have to balance the resources that you you give. 
that you have to, to, to use to realize it and the, the value that you get from the project. And uh, this balance is quite hard to, to do. And I think the answer of, the, of this question is quite hard. Maybe uh, you can answer yourself when uh, you will see our solution to the problem and how the system is organized. And the second one is, is it easy to implement? And this is um, a really interesting question because um, the answer is, is no. And the reason why, it's, uh, why the answer is no is that there is no um, rule-based approach to this problem. If there was a deterministic solution to the problem, then we are not considering AI or ML at all, because uh, if you have a rule-based approach, that is going to be the, simple, the simplest way to solve the problem, and it's going to work all the time. So ML, you don't even consider. Um, but, um, but the problem is that there is not a deterministic solution to the problem. Uh, uh, the, the reason is that if you watch uh, an audio signal or, um, or a video signal, of course, we, we are talking of a digital signal, but you can imagine a function like this, a chaotic function that goes up and down. Um, when you see the, the, um, um, how, how the signal is made, you cannot understand if the, the speaker is going fast or slow. This is the problem. You, you cannot find a link between the form of the signal and the speech rate. Or at least this link is very hard, uh, very complicated. Maybe um, a sound engineering could find it, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it would be uh, really complicated to to implement to explain. So we are um, we have understood that real based approach is out of discussion, and we go for the ML, and we are happy to do that because uh, this this course is on ML. <laughs> um, uh, and we go for the um, the last set. no 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 one second oh, sorry <laughs> yeah I I just had to say uh, that um, of course on, on the, the existing feature might be enough for for the average usage maybe it's not maybe you can just watch the recording uh, for one per you don't have to to speed up the video. But I think that in, in 2020, like a second matters a lot. You can do a lot of things in a second and time wasting is really annoying. I, I think every one of you has, uh, has felt, um, has had this, the feeling when you go to a site and the site is loading and you change instantly to another site. You, you can't wait any second because we, time wasting is, is, really hard, is really annoying. And that is the end of, of this uh, of this slide. You can go up, you can go on, Paolo. Thank you, Ludo. Okay, uh, so uh, as my colleagues uh, described, uh, our main concern of, uh, of our idea is uh, the post lesson experience of uh, the users of the platforms. Uh, so, uh, what does uh, what is the goal? of our system uh, we want to we we try to uh, maximize the ratio between um, time spent learning and uh, um, students learnings so uh, how do you how can we do that paolo please yes So uh, our system is uh, divided into two main uh, modules. The first one, the first one is uh, a machine learning uh, based, while the second one is uh, root based and it uh, already exists on the market and work, works fine. So uh, our um, uh, focus can uh, be uh, totally on only the first module. So uh, how does uh, this, uh, ma this machine uh, learning uh, type system works? This, uh, this module is the heart of our program. So we need to be very careful in the, cho in the choice we make. Uh, for 
starting, uh, we chose uh, as a machine learning technique, uh, uh, irrigation, and uh, uh, we, we use uh, a neural network. Okay, but how does the system actually work? Uh, it uh, receives as, uh, an input, uh, audio data, uh, audio video file. It is uh, then split into uh, homogeneous intervals. And uh, on each inter intervals, our first module work and try to find, it tries to find the best possible multiplier for each section. Then, the, um, then uh, all the information uh, outputted by the first module arrives in the second and the, the job is, is simply done. But uh, there are a lot, of pro a lot of problems with this implementation. The first one is really difficult to define the intervals, the length, the length of, of, of each interval. Uh, which we thought of two main methods. The first one is uh, uh, the method I uh, recently explained. So uh, using uh, uh, intervals with uh, equals length, while uh, a method more uh, flexible, but a lot more difficult to, to implement and uh, a lot more, a lot less cost efficient is using another uh, neural network or uh, machine learning software to divide the to split the audio in different sections of different lengths in uh, and each interval have have one. Um, generic property, that the speech rate in each interval is a uh, constant or uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't fluctuate too much. So um, as uh, we can see, this problem is not easy to implement. In fact, uh, um, there are a lot of ways one can uh, choose to do it and we are not sure that the, um, the idea we thought of is the better one, the best one, or, or also can be implemented in the real world. But one of the main features, one of the main benefits of our idea is the simplicity uh, with, uh, of the, um, of the, um, the simplicity in uh, um, obtaining all the training data for our ne neural network. In fact, we can simply use uh, as uh, an example of uh, good speech, in the good, so good um, uh, speech rate, uh, some uh, audio uh, chosen by uh, radio or uh, um, or like lessons or podcast speeches. And then we can uh, create example of a speech rate uh, faster or slower modifying this data. I leave uh, Paolo the words. Uh, thank you. Okay, perfect. So let's summarize um, the key points of, uh, of our projects. Uh, giving a look uh, to the pros and cons of this kind of implementation. Um, neural records aims to improve users' experience while watching a video. In particular, we focused on a problem uh, we faced personally in the last few months. As a team, in fact, uh, we all agreed that uh, manually adjusting the playback speed uh, of the video, speeding it up, uh, speeding it down, pausing it, resuming it, is kind of annoying while taking notes, for example. Um, so we tried to figure out a solution which can automate this process. Um, 
It should optim optimize our studying efficiency, of course, since the video and the audio are synced together with a theoretically perfect and understandable speech speed. Um, this tool uh, can also be used, um, I think, uh, uh, in uh, outside of this, of this of this particular uh, um, how can we say school field, uh, and we can use it uh, in all those systems which are able to reproduce videos. As we said before, as we said before, um, training data uh, can be obtained uh, from many different sources. Uh, radio, podcasts, uh, lectures, uh, online lessons, and so on. But uh, on the other hand, uh, a large set is needed to cover all possible borderline cases uh, and to implement, for example, uh, multi-language support. Well, uh, last but not least, uh, I have to say that our idea came up uh, uh, while we were focusing uh, on polyme and uh, we were trying to find some improvements in its, uh, in its services. So basically, we were trying to find uh, a solution for an international community. As you might expect, uh, uh, multilingual support uh, is, uh, would be a key feature for uh, neural records. But we think uh, it, is a difficult, it is quite difficult to achieve due to the differences in cadence and tone, for example, between different languages. And that's pretty much it, I think. I don't know if Matteo wants to say something more. Yeah, thank you, Paolo. Um, lastly, um, I would like to thank um, um, all the DSC um, members and also our facilitators, Jacopo, because um, th this has been a very great experience for us because um, we, um, we were able to, um, to work together because, <laughs> you know, um, it wasn't easy at first and we um i think that we spent like um, one hour and a half or maybe two hours to decide uh, what to talk about and what to implement and also um all the technique all the technical part um was very difficult to, <laughs> to think about it so um, um a, a very a strong thank to to all of you thank you Right. Well, it's it's great to hear this, right, Ale? Yeah, it's uh, literally um, one of the core values of uh, a BSC community. The fact that uh, for people, for students, you guys knew each other prior to these events, or uh, maybe not. But uh, like regard me, yes. <laughs> but um, you know, aside from that, probably this experience uh, allowed all of you to you know bond together and work on something that everyone in this group is interested in where you were able to identify a common problem uh, that all of you were experiencing and decided to you know apply something that you had just learned and go for it and why not uh, you won this competition and maybe uh, if the problem had been less you know relatable to other people might have not won the, the competition, but overall it would have been that uh, enriching and super you know, useful in the long run. So congratulations, uh, don't thank us, thank yourselves and thank all the other students that made these events you know, as enjoyable and as entertaining and for sure as useful because um, the, the engagement that we got from you and the rest of your peer students uh, was amazing. So. Thank you and congratulations. This was uh, an amazing project and uh, well, <laughs> Jacopo, I'm, I'm sure that he feels the same way too. Of course, uh, that's, that's why we chose them as uh, the winners right of this contest. Uh, but um, let me say that, um, of course, also all of the other projects were great. Uh, in this case, um, they, they won, which is fantastic. And um, that's also, uh, that was shown also by their great presentation was quite clear uh, you I think that you put a lot of effort into being uh, clear also for those who don't really have much of a background on machine learning so that was also great I think about your report also so um, what can I say some um, technical comments 
uh, I mean, I, I guess that what really made your project fantastic was that you addressed a problem that is true. Like you can probably say that every student in general, not only a Polytechnico, has this issue. And uh, also, also any sort of uh, video uh, watcher has this with issue, right? Uh, not only students. And so it's, it's a problem that really relates to a great um, pool of people, right? And so you solved this problem by employing a very simple approach, which is regression through a neural network, which is not the hardest thing ever um, that, that we do uh, in machine and deep learning, right? So, so, so you solved a very important problem using a nice approach that is not uh, quite hard to implement. And so th this is fantastic, right? You, you could also be able to combine your project together with the first project that we saw, right? The no more eye soreness. And that also adds a lot of value to, to both projects there. Right, and um, so you could combine summarization and speeding up um, a video lecture, and you would have way more efficient uh, students, probably. Right, and as you said, wasting time is a very big issue. What else? Also, I believe that the simplicity of the training data uh, added a lot of value to your project, right? Because it's always hard to make sure that you have data available, that you have enough data available. And you identified um, this um, data coming from radios, which is actually like a very good example of a kind of data that is quite cheap. So it's available and it's already kind of labeled, right? Yeah, it's reliable. It's, it's very it's reliable. It's reliable, exactly. Yes. That, that's exactly the... Um, the uh, the adjective for it and um what else i just wanted to add one point so you said that um you said something about rules-based uh, methods right so um so you're saying this problem isn't really solvable through a rules-based method and that that's probably true and why it is such because you would have to integrate all of the preferences from all of the people and consider them all together and if you try to do that rule space then the complexity will simply explode right uh, so there are cases in which you can actually use a, a rules based approach it is just that it's quite impractical right? you, you can't really do that right that's also the case for cats and dogs you could potentially use classical computer vision techniques to identify cats, so distinguish cats from dogs. And that would sort of be your rules based because in computer vision, you actually identify the features by using some mathematical functions. However, if you employ machine learning, if you employ artificial intelligence, if you employ specifically deep learning, then that's sort of automatically and magically done and it captures the features uh, by itself. So. Thanks a lot for identifying that. Really great. Uh, let me see if there are some questions for you in the chat. Yeah. So um, before yeah, the yeah. questions, uh, uh, actually, they were discussing about you know potential tweaks to your idea. So you can tell that this problem is, is very relatable to everyone that's currently watching this because they would like to adjust the speed ratio to what they may feel like listening to that specific on that specific lesson. Or maybe if you're international, you know, like I, I am from Spain and I had to take databases one in Italian my first semester because I come from uh, electronics engineering, but I'm doing a master's degree in computer science and Polytechnical thought that was required. Well, I was in class. Uh, this was in presence, but for me it was too fast. Right. But then online, I found a bunch of resources on databases one actually in Italian and I adjusted them to my, you know, my Italian level at the time. So they were discussing about how to multiply those factors, how to make it faster, slower. It's just amazing that uh, <laughs> we know, you know, we're living through this online mode life and now we are quickly adjusting to it. And you have found one of the core issues that students face every day because we all fall behind classes and we all watch recordings and we all press two times speed. And then we're like, what did he or she said? Uh, could we actually adjust it? So 
um, yeah, really good stuff, guys. Thank you. Yeah, so let's uh, try to answer this question. Um, Francesco is asking, how are silent parts managed by your solution? I can answer if you want, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe um, it's better if Paolo um, shares his screen with uh, you know the slide with uh, three recordings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> To make it more efficient. Okay. Okay. So uh, we said that um, we were working on the audio, and um, as uh, Francesco pointed out, silence uh, can be a critical factor. Basically, uh, we we take the audio of the video and we um, slice it in um, in many intervals of time. Uh, and the intervals are equal and um, so we are not doing an intelligent division of the audio in the in the first um, in, in our first project in our basic uh, version of the problem um, so basically we don't know what is going to enter in that uh, in that window it could be all silent it could be all words and it could be um, words and silence <laughs> and these are um, and these are what we call the critical uh, cases in our in our presentation or or, or the project. Basically, um, if you have uh, okay, so I have to say that everything uh, we 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 wrote and we thought of was um, was thanks to the lesson that we had with Jacopo and uh, and basically to this project. So we don't have. Uh, some some knowledge that ca that comes from other sources, um, but what we thought uh, what we thought was that if if the um, um, uh, the the section has only silent, we can teach the the machine to to make just um, maybe to to use two pair. We are not gonna skip anything because we don't want to create holes in the in the recording. I mean, our machine is not perfect, at least. <laughs> we cannot assume that so uh, we are not going to skip anything basically we are we are giving in um, in input also silence uh, silence uh, windows uh, during the train trading training phase uh, so that the machine applies uh, something like 1.5 per or 2 per or, or whatever um, if we have words and silence this is more more difficult to to manage we think that we can uh, we can teach the machine to use a multiplier based only uh, only on the words, basically to, to ignore the silence. Because if uh, if the voice is normal and there is some silence, um, you don't want to speed it up. The voice is normal. You want to keep it like that. You you will have the silence with one pair. So no, uh, you're not going to speed up the silence. But basically, you you have to to keep the word uh, the words clear and the voice. Uh, you ha you have to manage only the voice basically. And we think that this is um, teachable to the machine, giving in a fi um, file with some silence and voice, and teach him to to um, basically to ignore the silence part. I, I also want to mention that there are some things called silence detectors. So if we notice that the machine is not able to um, to learn how to manage silence, we can um, implement another model that basically uh, manages the silence with some detectors. So much for your answer and let me add on to that that detecting silence is kind of rules based also because you can just detect the level right of the the voice so you could both be using a classification uh, ml model like luca is also suggesting in the chat or also a rules-based approach probably right because that's just about the, the level of the uh, microphone right so yeah that's that's definitely interesting and to keep into consideration then we have one last question but we really have um, not a lot of time so luca is asking which are the variables involved in the regression process 
and it's quite clear that the output variable is the speed multiplier, right guys? However, yeah. the, the question of Luca is probably around the input variables, right? So you said you are going to use a neural network, your output is the speed multiplier, but how, which features would you consider uh, when you're dealing with audio? That's a very interesting question. Emilio, will you discuss the, um, these technical issues? It's a hard uh, question. I will try. <laughs> yeah. I will try. question, yeah. Uh, so, um, I, I think that uh, the easier model is uh, without uh, user uh, feedback. So, uh, uh, we can start uh, uh, by inputting uh, the audio file. So, uh, what is important in the other file? Uh, we can, I can think that uh, uh, one of the, one, uh, the, mo the most important thing is uh, the R, R, the frequency in that, uh, a specific time or uh, the amplitude of our uh, of our side interrupt you emilio there um what you said it's actually very interesting because that's exactly why deep learning was born because human uh, are not able to understand some features right so, so so it's quite difficult to understand which features are the ones that should be fed into the neural network in the case of, for, for instance, of sound, right? Or of some images or some videos. It's very hard to tell a network, hey, you should consider the, um, the size of the ears just by looking at an image, right? You would have to measure them somehow. So uh, it's, it's, it's hard to select the relevant features from audio. So what you would do is simply feed the, uh, the audio itself, the whole thing, to the neural network, right? You, you could want to um, give more importance to some features if you feel like those are more important, but th that, that's why deep learning was born, right? And it needs a lot of data. So Emilio, if you want to still add something onto that, go ahead. Um, I'm fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you see, we actually saw it is hard to think about features because we're in a very complex scenario that is analyzing audio, okay? Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot, guys, for your uh, presentation. Again, congratulations uh, you. for your project, for this result. It was amazing, and I'm sure the students uh, really appreciated your presentation. So thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, but bear with us. Do not leave. Because first, we have our last nomination. So you don't really want to leave um, the, um, the, the, the event right now. Well, you guys uh, can leave if you want the, uh, the screen. But um, anyway, first, I want, to, I want to make a last gift to all of you, right? So now you have done this amazing project, right? You have spent a lot of time in thinking about ways to solve a very hard problem, a problem that is quite relevant to a lot of students around Polytechnico. And you have also made really nice presentations, like the quality of those slides were actually very nice. Like the, the quality was outstanding for just having a couple of days to develop them. It, it, it was quite well done and the message that um, you wanted to convey was quite clear also by just looking at the slides. So most projects achieved this and this is just fantastic. So thanks a lot for putting a lot of effort into that. Really, that was fantastic, just fantastic. And now you might be wondering, how should I share everything that I've done with my network? How can I show others that I have done something great, that I've built something great, that my idea is out there? So 
let's um, go ahead and explore a way to do this. And this way will not only be employed during the session, this event, but you can definitely go ahead and do the same whenever you have some projects, some uh, certificate that you get, some any, anything else that you feel like you want to share with others, which will let you have a lot of visibility also with your network and will get you a lot of um, attention by uh, the others. So if you go ahead and uh, click on the link that I just shared in the chat, you can see an example of how you can do this. Right, so LinkedIn is the social network that you definitely want to use to create the network of professionals around you, and not only professionals, but also companies and universities. They use a lot LinkedIn to recruit people. You will uh, probably already, you're probably already receiving some messages on LinkedIn like, hey, we're hiring for this position, for this other position. And LinkedIn is just amazing in creating uh, your own and managing your own network, right? So if you see Ludovico's post, which we just look at um, as a reference, then you can see how he shared his experience and you can actually um, feel um, how passionate he is about everything that we have done, right? So he simply describes his project, he provides references to what he has done uh, through a link, and then he thanks uh, the venue that made uh, this possible. So Alejandro, the members of the core team, and myself. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, also all of you shall be thanked for participating into all of this. So please go ahead and do the same. Share with your network what you have done because that's totally important to gain visibility putting your um, project out there. All right. Absolutely, Jacopo. That's, uh, if I have something to emphasize, is for sure network, network, and network because you never know who you may meet you know, during these events or obviously at Polimi is full of brilliant people um, not only professionally or academically, but also friends and uh, who knows. So like, obviously, uh, try to get your work out there. Uh, right now, we are living through a phase where everything is posted out there, but not everything is worth looking at. Not everything is actually relevant. So if you contribute in a, you know, brilliant way, as uh, we are mentioning, you will be able to stand out. And that post uh, right there will definitely differentiate your work from many others. Um, the fact that we have such an amazing community at Politecnico de Milano right now with uh, developer student clubs is a unique opportunity. Not all universities have this kind of community. Not all communities are as engaged as all of you are. So take advantage of this stuff. Uh, get the word out there. And uh, please, obviously, keep participating. But that's uh, on the side note. This is obviously for you. And if I have to say something is that if this community is only as great as you want it to be. So um, up to you and obviously well done. Thank you for, you know, showing all this interest and uh, we will keep trying to live up to the high standard that uh, everyone has set during this week. So congratulations and thank you again. And Jacobo has one more thing. Yeah, we're, we're ready to share the last nomination. And in the meantime, please make sure to connect on LinkedIn with myself, with Alejandro, and with the members of the core team, and anybody else from this amazing community. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and connect with us, because we'll be very happy to see your progress on machine learning in the upcoming months. So if ever you will do another project, feel free to share it on LinkedIn and Alejandro and I and everybody else and this fantastic community will be uh, updated on that. So let me go ahead and share the last um, project that we're going to nominate. And since we're all fond of this particular topic, we will nominate a project for technology. So let me hear the drums. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Here it is, technology, 3D sound, right? So congratulations, Nicolo and Davide. Your project was actually very interesting.
from a technology standpoint. Actually, in this project, you were kind try, trying to solve a problem that was related both to Polytechnico, both to connecting during COVID, and also to psychology itself also if you think about it because what they are trying to do in this project is to making the audio of video calls 3d right so they're trying to simulate uh, an environment uh, that is around you right right so like something like 360 degrees uh, interaction and um, they say that audio filtering techniques are not enough and they really want to make the sound natural. So in order to do this, they would employ a neural network to transform the audio from, let's say, 2D, right? So just from just in your ears to 3D audio, so something similar to what 8D uh, sounds uh, do, which is actually quite cool. If you haven't done so, go ahead and listen to 8D uh, music with your headphones. Um, of course, of course, um, there's a lot of room for improvement on the technical side, but the idea was quite strong and great and supported by some machine learning methodologies, which made a lot of uh, sense. So thanks a lot, Nicolò and Davide, and congratulations for winning this nomination. Again, thanks a lot to all of you for bearing with us. We'll be happy to answer any other technical questions on our various channels and I'll leave it to Alejandro for the final remarks and answering some questions regarding the certificate and uh, any other things and again from my side I really want to thank you because you were a fantastic um, community during this, these events. I found that working, collaborating with you was fantastic. And also special thanks to Alejandro and the core team members because they made all of this possible uh, by just supporting me with anything. So thanks a lot on that. And yeah. All right. Um, well, just a few words to make it brief. Um, we love memes, first of all, as you can tell. But now, uh, in all seriousness, first of all, thank you, Jacopo. This has been the first time we've organized such a uh, successful series of events, and we decided to do it on the hottest topic right now, which is machine learning. Um, so obviously, hold on, I will share my screen now. There we go. So, so you know, like the fact that you were available to do this stuff, uh, and all the work that you put into it really helped us to collaborate with you, to support you all throughout uh, this week. And obviously prior to this week, because uh, this has been in the, in the oven for quite a time. Um, and it was just amazing. Hopefully we'll be able to continue on because a lot of students are interested in the intermediate track. So we'll um, evaluate that option and we'll see because Polymi's calendar is quite busy. So we'll find a few dates to uh, arrange something for that. But really, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, as for all the students who have participated either by attending the live events or maybe watching the recordings, which uh, we'll upload uh, as soon as this event is over. And of course, those that participated in the um, project contest, uh, I can't thank you enough because I mentioned this before, but it really is true that if you want this community to be great, um, you make it great. Because if you show this engagement, we will keep organizing more and more events. We'll be able to bring in uh, more hosts. And obviously, um, we'll be able to touch upon different technologies, different topics. And um, on that note, uh, this series is over now. But we are working on um, presenting a new series on startups pretty soon, a new one on Flutter, and probably that will be it for this year because considering that there's only one month left, sort of, until uh, Christmas break, we don't want to overwhelm everyone. But as you can tell, we are really devoted to this community, to everyone that shows interest, and for us it's also a great opportunity to learn because myself, I'm not an expert on machine learning. And I was enjoying this probably as much as all of you. And now I feel like more confident, probably 
not to the level of the winners of the project, but uh, to the point where I actually understand the basics. And that was really what this uh, series was about. So yeah, on that note, I would just like to thank everyone again and uh, wrap it up here. We will post everything. And uh, until next time, we'll keep in touch on Telegram, on YouTube, on our social media platforms. But everyone has been fantastic. And uh, just sit tight because there's more content to come. Okay? Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.